Okay, but for real, thank you so much for over 100,000 followers on here. That's the coolest thing ever, and this is amazing to have because as a kid who grew up watching YouTubers all the time, it's absolutely nuts to me that I now have one of these things in my house. Anyways, onto the video. So one of the most commonly asked questions I get is how do I make espresso at home without an espresso machine? And today I'm gonna be reviewing the Flare Espresso Maker Pro 2. Now to be totally clear, they did send me this, but it's a really, really cool machine. I love it, I'll be using it all the time and I wanted to show it off to you because it's a more affordable option for people who wanna make espresso at home. Now, as you can see, it comes in this really nice carrying case and it's all disassembled, but don't let that intimidate you because it's really, really easy. Now, I'm gonna pull all the pieces out. As you can see, it has these two main black pieces that are the main body of the espresso maker. It also has a brew head, it has a couple different seals and tamps, and there you go. That's all there is to it. Oh, besides the little drip tray in the bag right here, which is very cute with the logo on it, by the way. Anyways, that's about it. Really easy, and let me show you how you need to assemble it. So, you just slip these two body pieces together. They're is the option to make them permanently together with a screw if you want, but for travel, it's really easy to just keep them separate. You place the little drip tray in, you have your brew head here, you have a tiny little tamp that is very adorable, thank you very much, Flair. You have a little funnel, you have another tamp for other uses, and then you have this little pressure gauge, which is really nice for brewing espresso at home because you do have kind of an understanding of how much pressure you're applying. Last of all, you'll need several things from your own home. So you'll need a receptacle of some sort. I'm gonna start off with this clear shot glass from Rattleware as it'll show the espresso as it pulls and we'll be able to see the crema. You'll need finely ground coffee. I ground this slightly coarser than I would for espresso. That seemed to work pretty well for me. And you'll need a scale for exact measurements of your espresso and your water. So there you go. Oh, and you'll need hot water, of course. Fresh off a of boil. There you go, I got it right there, and now let's start. So you're gonna disassemble the brew head just like this. You have a smaller filter, you have the porta filter, then you have the entire body of the brew head. Flair itself recommended that I start with 20 grams of ground espresso. I found that to be a very nice ratio. So the first thing we're gonna do is attach the funnel to the porta filter and dose out 20 grams of espresso. Now, as I mentioned before, I made this slightly coarser than I would for espresso. That worked very well for me. Again, as people dial in different coffees, you might need different sizes of grind and different amounts of coffee. I'm using a medium roast. That's a Guatemala Ethiopia blend, fresh off of roast, and it was super delicious. All right, so we've got very, very close to 19, 19.6, 19.7, 19.9. I guess I didn't need to be exact, so there we go. All right, now you're going to want to settle your coffee into the portafilter. I gave it a couple of spins and some firm taps, and then you have it all set in there. Perfect. Now we're going to use that tiny tamp that Flair gave us, settle it nicely into the top, very, very flat, and then just press down firmly as to create a flat surface and also clean up the edges as you go. If you have a little coffee around the edges, a couple loose grounds, it's no biggie. Also, we make spills here all the time and it's no problem. This is not Morgan spills coffee. This is Morgan drinks coffee, but Morgan does spill coffee occasionally, which is totally fine. Now that we have our portafilter all ready, we're gonna add in that second filter that is gonna seal the coffee into the portafilter so we don't have it just floating loosely when we drop our water in there. Now we're gonna preheat the brew head. This is something that was recommended to me by Flair and I found it to be super helpful when extracting the espresso. So we're just gonna seal it off, pour a little bit of hot water in there and then wait for roughly 20 or 30 seconds, however long you think it's gonna take. This is really helpful and ultimately just gives you a really nice finished product. After that, we're gonna dump out all that water and we are just about ready to go with pulling our espresso. See how quick this is and how easy it is? And it's really fun, honestly. Kind of felt like I was doing an arts and crafts project to get my espresso going. All right, so we're gonna pull off that bottom seal and then we're just gonna place the brew head right back on top of the portafilter. It slides in and connects and seals super, super easily. Now get your fresh hot water straight off a boil and we're gonna be pouring that into the top there, which is gonna be the water we use for our extraction. So just carefully pour it in. Uh, the recommendation was to pour it right until it reaches the very top of that little hole you can see and that worked very well for me. Um, I didn't measure it exactly, but I just followed the visual directions and honestly it was great. All right, so we have this pressure gauge right here. You're now going to press that into the top. That is what you're gonna be applying pressure to when you're extracting espresso. And it was really, really cool. I 
haven't seen a ton of these home espresso machines that have these. So now you're just gonna start applying pressure to the top. You're gonna be watching your gauge, making sure you're in the espresso zone as it is, which is six to nine bars of pressure. And you can see the espresso has started to pull. It is absolutely beautiful underneath. The Flare Espresso Machine does come with a tiny spout, but I think the look of like the naked porta filter underneath is so much prettier. As you can see, we're getting a super nice crema on top and we're almost there with a full double shot of espresso just at home without a machine for a really affordable price, which is awesome. So pull it out, give it a look. You can see it has that nice crema on top. It has beautiful color. It has a nice look of the body, but let's give it the actual test, which is putting it into a ceramic, giving it a smell and giving it a sniff. And I'm just, man, I'm loving these espresso shots. This was so much fun to film. Okay, so I gave it a smell first of all, now that it's had some time to sit for a minute and just aerate. Smelled really good and I've drank this coffee quite a bit so knowing what it was supposed to taste like was really helpful because honestly this pulled super well. We didn't spend a ton of time dialing in. This was kind of a let's get it close to what we want it to be and just go for it and it's, it's delicious. This is one of the best home espressos I've had, especially on a machine like this. Now I want to move on and let's do it again for the recipe I actually wanted to show you today. So I'm going to use the leftover espresso I had and it turns out I didn't have enough leftover espresso. So, so what this is called? is please measure your espresso as you grind it because then you're left with what is happening right now where you have to travel all the way back around the counter and get new coffee and grind it again because you didn't measure before and you thought you had enough but guess what it was only 11 grams and it wasn't 20 grams and 11 grams isn't gonna pull a good shot of espresso okay now that I have a ground on the fancy EK 43 which I wish I had at home but I don't so we're in the coffee shop today we're making our way back we're gonna finish that espresso shot that we started and honestly at this point I'm kind of out of breath so I'm just gonna let y'all vibe and watch what I'm doing right now which is all the steps I showed you before while I catch up and I'll get you in like one second okay see you soon Okay, so if you hadn't read the title of the video, we're making affogados today. Affogados are delicious, and if you haven't had one, let me just introduce you to them today. So they are essentially ice cream and espresso. Honestly, what sounds better than that on a hot July day? Now today I'm using my favorite, which is the Trader Joe's cookie butter ice cream. No, I'm not sponsored, but hey, Trader Joe's, if you want to sponsor me, my email is morgandrinkscoffee.gmail.com. Not sponsored, but you know, it's the good stuff. We're just gonna load up a hefty mountain here because we're gonna pull the espresso right on top of it so it melts the ice cream as we go. I guess that was a little too much ice cream so we're just gonna have to deal with what we have there. Okay, good to go. Now, still repeating the steps that we did before, we're filling up our little brew basket with hot water and getting ready to pull that espresso deliciously over top this vanilla ice cream that is full with cookie butter chunk. Now we are all ready to go, reattach that little pressure gauge, stick it back in the flare body, and we are ready to get started. As I mentioned before, I'm just gonna stick the ice cream right underneath this, and you're gonna watch some of the most attractive espresso shots you have ever seen in your life. I could watch these for days. I'll be honest, on TikTok and Instagram, sometimes I just spend hours flipping through espresso videos of wonderful little home drinks and cafe drinks of melted ice cream, and just the most aesthetic ice possible. You know what videos I'm talking about. Anyways, as we're watching that wonderful espresso pull up, up. We're just almost done. The flare is doing its business and there you go. The most wonderful little sweet summer dessert you ever did see. Only appropriately eaten with a tiny demi toss spoon. Now as you can see it's melted and become this kind of slushy root beer float thing but not actually a root beer float because it's espresso and ice cream. Anywho it's magically delicious and wonderful and I hope you get to try it someday too because it's my favorite thing ever. Now as I mentioned before the flare was sent to me and it is honestly one of my favorite products. I'd never handled it before receiving it and it's it's super cool I'll be taking this all around with me especially since it has a carrying case I would highly recommend it for you too and go to the link in the description down below if you want to get one for yourself okay I hope you have a great day follow me on the rest of my socials if you want to and I hope you have again a great day I guess I already said that before okay goodbye